the funds to exhaust in the various different positions. But I'm only going to be one minute. So. But they're recording, so it's a new recording mix. Ah, well, that's okay. It doesn't matter. This is not part of the. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, thanks. Well, should I start again then? Yeah. So <laughs> this, yeah. heat, so heat source is moving around in in, uh, in 40 days. Uh, so let's just wait to the beginning of a run and see what. In, so initially, there it comes. Yeah, there it starts. You see a very fast carbon wave going out in front of it. It goes around in about 10 days, catches up with it. And then when it's over the Pacific, you see the extratropical response over Pacific North America. And then it comes around again, and that response is reinforced again. So uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing you can do. So I'm just showing you that just to say that for people who are interested, uh, we can put together experiments like this. Um, uh, this afternoon, uh, so I'm going to just say if there's if there's a, a small group of people who are interested in doing this, I'll I'll have a little session at, um, at the beginning of the afternoon to show you how this model works. Okay. So I mean I'm poaching Anna Carolina's time here, so just if, if there's any question, you know, really quick, and then I'm going to just sit down and shut up. Anyone? Yeah. Okay, good. I've got one person interested. That's, that's all I need. Right. <laughs> all right, over to you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think this one, okay. Beginning in the maybe sometime later, the okay. sphere to improvise. Okay. Good morning. Um, first of all, thank you for the attention and thanks for Fred and Dr. David Stroll for the invitation to be here today. My name is Ana Carolina, I'm from Brazil, University of Sao Paulo, and I'm going to present you the influence of isotropical disturbance on the Atlantic Intertropical Convergence Zone. This is the structure of my presentation. First of all, the motivation, introduction, objective, data. Then we developed a multivariate index for the Atlantic ITCZ. From now, I will call it AITCZ for the Atlantic ITCZ. The variability of the AITCZ on interseasonal time scales for austral summer and for austral winter also. The relationship with the MJO and conclusions. This is an article that we published in Climate Dynamics in 2016. Here you have the reference if you want to see after. This article has the results I present to you now. Then this is a map for the population density for 2015. Then, as you can see, the most populated areas are concentrated in the tropics, as in Africa and South America. And this area is the region that ITCZ, where ITCZ acts. And the range of related and associated with ITCZ is important for agriculture and other kind of activities and for example for the northern Brazil we have more than 55 million inhabitants and the GDP is 13 percent of the country for Brazil and the relatively this is a relatively poor region in the country then rainfall events are very important for this region for agriculture and also some dry periods related to the anomalous position of the ITCZ in the north. Then the Atlantic ITCZ impacts also the Sahel region. 
uh, where we have more than 200 million undernourished people. And more, this is more than one third of the total undernourished people in the world. Then, as I said, um, in Africa, the rainfall in this region is very important for the agriculture activities. And we have also some floods related to rainy periods in northeastern Brazil or dry periods when ITC is located uh, anomalously in the northern hemisphere. Then this region also is a, a region of um, some traffic between northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, maritime traffic and air also. Then, with, based on this motivation, uh, we, we studied the Atlantic ITCZ specifically. This is a circulation uh, cell, this, these are the circulation cells, the, the patterns of the circulation of the world. Then here you have the ITCZ, where you have the confluence of the trade winds, the trade winds that comes from the um, subtropical, subtropical highs. And then if you look at a satellite image, this is the band that's related to the ITCZ, this very strong convective band. Then here you have the, the Atlantic. Uh, ITCZ. Some variables define the ITCZ. Um, the first one is the trade wind confluence. The second is the equatorial trough. The ITCZ is related to the maximum SST region, to the maximum mass convergence and the maximum convective cloud cover band. All these variables can define the ITCZ, however, they are not located at the same latitude. Then this is um, the evolution of the rain, uh, this is our precipitation field from Trin, and this is an evolution through the year, from January to, to December. The annual cycle of the ITCZ is the most important cycle of the convergence zone, as you can see. In September and October and August, the ITCZ is in its northernmost position. In during February, March, and May, the ITCZ is located in its southernmost position, then affecting the northeast Brazil or affecting the Sahel region. However, the annual cycle is the most important cycle of the ITCZ. ITCZ has a variability in a broad range of time scale, time scales. From diurnal, related to the diurnal cycle, up to decadal, to multi-decadal oscillations. In the diurnal uh, scale, it's the, the variability is related to the diurnal cycle of the convection, in the synoptic uh, scale, the ITCZ is modulated by the easterly waves from Africa that has a variability between one and 10 days. In intra-seasonal time scale, it's mostly the, the, the major part of the variability is related to the MJO, that's the focus of this work. And also have the variability in semi-annual and annual uh, scales. And in interannual scales, also related to the only southern oscillation and gradient between the seas SST in the northern Atlantic and southern Atlantic. And also in the Cadao time scales can, that can be related to AMO and PDO. Well, our focus here is for intra-seasonal time scales. Then we have some works that uh, if there is the, um, the variability of the ITCZ in the interseasonal time scale, but we have so few works on this scale. Then, first of all, Uv and Novri showed that the interseasonal oscillations appear to influence the attitudinal position of the ITCZ, in a, and has, it has a variability in a scale of 10 up to 20 days. The Souza showed that AHCZ is the main mechanism associated with the rainfall in the northern Brazil, in eastern Amazon, in a time scale of 10 up to 30 days. 
and this works here showed a zone of precipitation seesaw in the Atlantic region, the equatorial Atlantic region. Um, on a time scale, this is so variating on a time scale of then up to 15 days. They, they say in the, in the article, they call this as a quasi biweekly dipole, zonal dipole. Then, as you can see, the variability of the ITCZ in all interests and on time scales occur in between 10 and 30 days. Then, the objective of, of this work is during austral summer, I will consider here austral summer for the period of November up to March, and for austral winter, I will consider May up to September. During these two periods, what are the atmospheric mechanisms and tropical or tropical teleconnection patterns associated with the AITCZ, interseasonal variability, and the relationship between this variability and the MJO activity. Then the data used here was from, were from CFSR reanalysis, the outgoing long wave radiation from LOA, and the study period is 32 years, from 1979 up to 2010. <coughs> then, First of all, we propose here a multivariate index to analyze the variability of the Atlantic ITCZ. Uh, from now, this index I will use ITCZ I, I from index. Then this index is based on the first combined, oh sorry, first combined EOF, empirical orthogonal functions. Um, for three variables, precipitation, zonal wind, and meridional wind in low levels. A combined EOF of these three variables for this domain here, for Atlantic, and the time coefficient of this EOF will be the index. This index uses pentagon anomalies of the variables, and the anomalies has uh, annual cycle and long-term trend removed, and the explained variance for the first mode is 10%. Then this is, these are the spatial patterns of the combined EOF first mode. Then we have here the Pearson correlation uh, between the correlation between the precipitation field and the time coefficient of the EOF, the index. This first mode shows an intensification of precipitation really represented by positive uh, values here related to convergence here of the zonal wind in low levels. We have negative values that represent easterlies. Intensification of the trade winds then. And here related with also uh, positive values of meridional wind and intensification of uh, Southerns. Then we have intensification of the trade winds related to the climatological position of the, the ITCZ, almost five degrees north. Then we can see that the special pattern is, is uh, represented by the index for ITCZ. This is the, the time series of the EOF, this is the temporal characteristics of the index. This is just an example for four years of this series. And here we perform the wavelet spectrum, spectrum for this index. And you can see significant peaks on interseasonal, in semi-annual, and on interannual time scales. So then this index can capture the variability of the Atlantic convergence zone, intertropical convergence zone, in, a, in all these time scales. Here, the power spectrum for the index. You can see here you have some interseasonal peaks, and if we zoom the region of interseasonal peaks, we have a significant peak between 15 and 20 days. Then the index captures the, the interseasonal variability of the ITCZ. Then you can use this index to represent and to study the, the AITCZ interseasonal variability. Here in blue, we have the index, the original index. Then in red, we have the future index. 
We filtered using a fast Fourier transform in the band from 10 up to 70 days. Band in red have the future index. From now, I use only the filtered index, then the filtered in the interseasonal band, and you filtered also the variables. Here, using the positive values, the upper quartile values of the index for, for summer and separated for the winter, we will co um, perform composites and you have intense ITCZ events. When the ITCZ is intensified, the convection is intensified. And if you use the lower quartile here and make composites, leg composites, you see that when the ITCZ is weakened, okay? Uh, I, I mean this pattern here, okay? Positive values, if you have negative values of the Combining the EOF, you have opposed signal for all the fields. So, here I present you the composites, then the intraseasonal variability of the Atlantic ITCZ, then first uh, for Austral summer from November to March. I will present you all the intense events, okay? They weaken. In the, the weak events are almost the same, but with the uh, opposed signal. Then the first panel here have the composed, lag composed for the OLR and wind in low levels. Here, meridional wind in upper levels. Here, geopotential high in upper levels and wind in low levels. And here, wind in upper levels. This is a composed for the leg minus one, one pentad before the event. We, you see the pentad before the event, the pentad of the event, and one pentad after the event. Then we can see um, the intensification of the trade winds in Africa area in this first composite, and some centers of action in northern hemisphere, anticyclone and cyclones, then resembles a Ross wave, wave trend. Then here, in the original wind composite, we can see some, a part of the wave trend that's propagating toward Eurasia and another part that's propagating towards a tropical Atlantic. And then here, I put the T to represent troughs and R to represent ridges. Then you can see that we have ridges aligned with anticyclonic circulations in low levels, and we have troughs aligned with cir cyclonic circulations in low levels also. Then here, for the upper levels, we can see an anticyclonic circulation, and there, in low levels, again, anticyclonic circulation. Then this is a very tropical structure that's very characteristic for a Rosby wave trend. And here, this intensification of the trade winds can be, is promoted by this anticyclonic circulation over Africa. And also here you can see an intensification of the subtropical high, North Atlantic subtropical high. Then for the lag of the event, you can see here, in this region, you have negative anomalies of OLR, then we have intensification of the convection in the Western Atlantic, Tropical Atlantic, where I put the cloud here, and where I put the sun, we have suppression, positive values of OLR. Then we have intensification, uh, easterly anomalies, intensification of the trade winds related to the convergence of um, the trade winds and intensification of the convection. In low levels, you can see some centers of action yet. We have a pair of cyclones here in Africa and in, and in Atlantic. They are favoring the intensification of the trade winds in Africa, in this case. Here you have two paths of propagation, one to Eurasia and the other one towards the Atlantic. The shaded areas are significant, statistically significant areas for the composite. And here is very interesting, you have a divergence of the meridional component of the wind. This divergence 
can, is promoting uh, an intensification of the convection in the ITCZ area. Then we have a transition from barotropic structure in the extratropics into, um, into a baroclinic structure near to the equator. Have also the, the structure of the wave trend, the northern hemisphere, and uh, the pair of uh, cyclones here, also in in the Africa and over Atlantic Ocean, west eastern, eastern Atlantic. Here you can see a duct, a westerly duct in upper levels. SG at all uh, 2014 showed this westerly duct um, favors uh, inter an interhemispheric propagation of trade winds. Then for the next leg, we can see that's very clear. We have an interhemispheric propagation from the wave frame from northern hemisphere towards the southern hemisphere. Then you have yet some intensification of the convection in the ITCZ, but uh, more uh, in the east western Pacific, sorry, it's western Atlantic. Here also in a, a cyclone uh, circulation, and here the weakening of the trade winds, as you are in the leg plus one after the event, after the intensification of the ITCZ. Here, as I said, you have an interim strike propagation and a part of the wave trend that's propagating to, towards the, the Eurasia. Oh, sorry. And here, uh, we have an evidence also the, of the interim strike propagation at trough and the ridge. Uh, in the opposed hemisphere, opposed from the uh, wave trend. And here, yeah, the westerly duct in the upper levels. Then, as you can see for summer, we have a propagation in the winter hemisphere, austral summer, but the propagation occurs in the winter hemisphere where we have the wave guides, uh, the more intense wave guides. Then for the also winter, for, from May to September, this is the compost again for intense events, but for leg minus one. And you have again uh, almost the same mechanism, intensification of the trade winds in the Africa area. But now we can see some action um, centers in the southern hemisphere. That resembles a, a wave trend, a Rosby wave trend. We can also see this this characteristic in the OLR composed here: positive, negative, positive, negative. Then, if you, if you look at the meridional wind, this is a structure that resembles that's very similar to Pacific South American first mode in the positive phase. Then I have here the PSA one. And here in this field, you can see the ridges aligned in the vertical with anticyclonic circulations in the low level. It's not working. Okay. And here we have uh, troughs uh, aligned with the cyclonic. When the, the wave trend is propagating towards the equator, it gains a uh, baroclinic structure with a tilt to the west, with the, with the high. Then here, uh, we have the centers of action in upper levels also. This is for like zero during the event, okay? Um, we have intensification of the, the convection in the ITCZ represented by the index, represented by the first e combined EOF, I presented in the beginning of the presentation, associated with the intensification of the trade winds. Look at here, our focus is on extratropical disturbance, not in Kelvin waves. We are not focused in Kelvin waves. We are focused in the extratropical disturbances. Then here you have the centers of actions again, action again, and here, uh, an intensification of the South Atlantic subtropical high promoted by the wave train that resembles the PSA. Here in the meridional wind, it's very clear again, and here in upper and low levels again. Then this is an equivalent barotropic structure, this is a rust wave. And for the lagging 
after the event, we have yet some uh, intensification of the convection. And here, uh, in the South America, I have a, um, a second circulation associated with uh, negative anomalies of OLR, then the wave from propagating in the south southern uh, hemisphere. Yet, in the, we have here the wave trend, and the, a trough aligned with uh, cyclone circulation, low levels and upper levels. Then, uh, for the uh, winter composites, we didn't see an interhemispheric propagation as we saw for the summer. Then we investigated the relationships with the MJO. For this, we used an index that's, uh, that can divide the propagation of the, the, the MJO in eight phases. And first of all, uh, some uh, observation is that, that not all the interseasonal activity is necessarily uh, linked to MJO. We have a part of interseasonal variability that is uh, not related to MJO. Okay. Uh, then for this investigation, we used the, an MJO phase index from Jones. And for this index, they use, uh, they perform a combined EOF, first and second mode for these variables here. They use an annual cycle removed for this band. They filter in this band 20 up to 200 days for this region, tropical region. Then this is just to show you how they, I think everybody knows this, but for uh, phase zero is negative MJO and the other phases are the represent the propagation of the MJO. For example, phase two here have intensification of the, conver the, con the convective activity and related to the convergence of the zonal wind. Then, um, in the upper panels here, we see an statistic of the intensification and weakening of the ITCZ and for during MJO events and during inactive phase of the MJO. The black, is, uh, the black column is for intense events and the gray is for weak events. Then you can see they have more events occurring, occurring during, during the MJO activity, and, but we have some events for summer and winter that occur during the inactive phase of the MJO. Um, here is a statistic for summer for each phase of the MJO. Then we separated all the events, the intensification events and weakening events of the Atlantic ITCZ, but for each phase of the MJO, when the MJO is active. Then you see um, a clear pattern. We have an intense, more intensification events here in black columns. We have more intensification of the ITCZ between phases four and seven. And we have more events of weakening of the ITCZ between phase eight and three. These dots here represent where we have statistically uh, significant differences between the proportions. And here for the winter, uh, there is there are more weak events during the phases one up to four, and there are more intense events between phase four, five and eight. Then this, very, this is a very clear pattern. Uh, then the conclusion for this is the index we proposed in the beginning, the ITCZI, is a new framework able to capture the spatial temporal variability of the ITCZ on several time scales, but here we focus it in the intraseasonal one. The mechanisms associated with the ATCZ intraseasonal variability are related to variations in North Atlantic subtropical high and in North Atlantic subtropical high. Then these variations promote chance in the trade winds and then chance in the ITCZ. The main the dynamic forcing is our Ross wave trends in the winter hemisphere. Um, the majority of the ITC's intraseasonal events occurred during the active AMJO. The intensification of the AITCZ 
uh, occur during the when the convection is in the Western Pacific and suppression is on in the Indian Ocean in Africa. This is the, the phase of MJO I'm, pre I'm presenting here. This work gives evidence of MJO indirect effects via astrotropics over tropical Atlantic. This work evidence that we have some astrotropical forcing that forces tropical convection. And this uh, can help better understanding about atmospheric mechanisms that explain the interseasonal variability in the tropical Atlantic. And this is a contribution to advance uh, weather and climate forecasting for low latitudes. Then here we have a summary of the results for the, the ultra summer. Then we have um, phase, MJ only phases between eight and three with convection here and suppression in red color. Then have uh, triggering of um, a wave trend and uh, intensification of the North Atlantic subtropical high, intensification of the trade winds in the Atlantic region, and then intensification of this pattern that's represented by the combined EOF and suppression here in these both areas. For the Austro winter, we have um, convection over Indonesia and suppression over Indian Ocean, MJO between five and eight. And the convection MJO triggers a um, wave trend that resembles the Pacific South America first mode positive. And this wave frame modulates the circulation of the South Atlantic um, subtropical high and then intensification of the trade winds related to this intensification of this circulation here and intensification of the convection in, in tropical Atlantic and suppression over Africa. Then this is a summary for uh, Austral summer and Austral winter here for weak events. In red, you have suppression of the convection and for uh, intense events. You can see that have all the, almost the opposed signal. And here, um, for weak events, we have PSA first mode negative phase. Um, these are some reference. And I'd like to thank Dr. Leila Carvalho and Adilson Gandu and Dr. Charlie Jones for the MJO index he used it here, and Dr. David and Fred for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. And ITTP for the financial support, and FAPES, NPQ, and CAPS for the financial support during this research. Thank you for the invitation. Grazie.